and welcome to The Wedding Show, our weekly chat show all about weddings. To get involved in the conversation, simply leave a comment or questions in the comments section below, or you can private message us at info at myweddingstore.ie, or pop in and see the store in Clooney, County Sligo. This show is brought to you in association with My Wedding Store. My Wedding Store, in case you didn't know, is a one-stop shop for all your wedding needs. For more information, check out myweddingstore.ie, incorporating retail, hire, and wedding services. If you'd like to sponsor an episode, then please get in touch. Or if you'd like to sponsor a prize or a giveaway, then of course, let us know privately and we'll organize that. This week's episode is all about beauty and makeup. And since uh, the boys and myself know very little <laughs> about makeup, we thought we'd bring in the experts and we thought it best to bring a more qualified host on board uh, to ask the questions. Um, so thank you, Adele, for joining us. Um, and we men will uh, just nod our heads and agree with everything you say. Um, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get the show started, you know. Um, Adele, uh, Adele Kearns is with us tonight. Adele works in the makeup department in Lannan's Pharmacy right. in Sligo and is also an upcoming bride, so congratulations. Mm. Thank you very much. Um, really excited. Brilliant. Uh, our two makeup artists with us uh, this evening is Anne Young from Anne Young Makeup Hello. and Charlene Flanagan of Charlene Flanagan Makeup. Uh, and running the show behind the scenes is our uh, duo, Brian McDermott, running the production in the background there. Hi, guys. <laughs> And, of course, we have, uh, watching the social media and keep an eye on the comments and everything, is Michael O'Donovan. So, hi, guys. How are you? They've decided to go Michaelis this week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good. Okay. Cool. Well, so, girls, I suppose to start off, how, uh, how are you guys getting on? Uh, Great. It's Great. been a good week? Good. Really good. Very good. Good. By holiday uh, weekend, very busy weekend. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. good. So, we are, we're starting into the wedding season. It's, uh -huh. it's starting to get busy and everything as well. So, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's one of these things that we want to discuss on the show was kind of just beauty and makeup and makeup tips yeah. and the whole mm -hmm. lot for all the upcoming brides over the summer and, and, and so on, you know? Yeah. Um, and so we'll probably start off with, I'm going to, Adele, I'm going to get you to ask the questions, oh. since I know Thanks nothing about makeup. <laughs> um, so we've got a, a few questions listed for, for, uh, for Adele to, uh, to help her out tonight. Um, so over to you, Adele. Thank you very much. I suppose the first question I would, have, I would have thought straight away after is when I was starting my plan and I was like, how do I know who to choose as a makeup artist? That was, that was my key, you know, key question in my head. So, you know, I suppose that's a question for Anne and Charlene here tonight. Mm -hmm. who, how would you let someone know, you know, how, who's the best out there to choose? Or not, mm -hmm. in, you know, that what would you look for when you're choosing your makeup artist for, for the biggest day of your life? Yeah. Well, I suppose really, um, brides now do their homework. They really do their homework and they'll ask around and they'll chat to people and they'll chat to friends and they'll find out who's good and who's in the business. And um, generally, I suppose brides will have you checked out. Generally, when a bride gets in touch with me, they'll have done their homework. Mm -hmm. They'll have been on my Facebook page. They've been on my Snapchat. They're on my Instagram. They have looked at my work and they either like what I do or they don't. And um, usually at that stage, They'll, um, you, you want somebody, I suppose, who knows what they're doing, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, that has experience, that has experience doing bridal makeup. There's loads of makeup artists out there, but you want somebody who knows what they're doing with regards to timing. I suppose bridal makeup, I have to say, is probably the hardest makeup to do. It has to do so many different things. You probably agree with me, yeah, Shirlene. Yeah. It has to last all day. It has to look really natural. It has to photograph really well. Mm -hmm. It has to take you from day into night. So it's probably the hardest makeup to do. So brides really, really need to do their homework, you know, and choose wisely. There's so many makeup artists out there, so you really have to do your homework. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'd say to any bride getting married, just to um, really do your homework and get plenty of, you know what I mean, chat to, to people and see who they've used and get a rec recommendation, I suppose, is the main thing. Um, and I, I think word of mouth and, and talking to people, that's really yeah, where so you'd start. I suppose, like, a lot of, yeah. lot of brides would say, they would have. Uh, they might have been a bridesmaid before. Absolutely. And they might, you know, you might have done yeah. their makeup at their sister's wedding or something like that, yeah. or a friend's wedding and stuff. Yeah. So, but would you find that we say a lot of people find you through kind of we say the social media and from literally looking online first, mm. or is it more kind of through personal recommendations? Like me personally, I find social media has a massive effect on my business, um, where most people come across me. I do publicize a lot of my work through my social media, so I mm. use it quite heavily to kind of brand and advertise myself. But um. 
definitely I, I always see um, like a circuit almost where bridesmaids or the sister of the family or somebody even, even just at Easter weekend, I did two weddings and I had emails on the same day from girls that attended the wedding to say, yes. you've done my friend's makeup. i um, just yeah, wondering, are you yeah. free on my date? Mm-hmm. So it is very much like, Absolutely. I suppose online is online word of mouth as well, mm-hmm. you know, but um, definitely I find social media plays a massive factor for me yeah. for sure. And as Anne was saying, um, I always would recommend to the brides, ask the makeup artists for their portfolios, ask mm. them for, you know, as many photographs as you can, because yeah. makeup is so different on every single person that some makeup artists can have a specific style, you know, and that might not necessarily be your style, you know, so it's nice to see a variety. So always just mm-hmm. ask for the portfolio. Most makeup artists have built up um, a, an album of images yeah, exactly. um, that can be there to be sent. So it's no harm to, to look at that. But um, yeah, I totally agree yeah. with Anne that yeah, brides are well media. clued in Absolutely. now. They know, they know who no, to go yeah. to. Yeah, and, social yeah. media is just huge yeah. now. But probably when I started my business, which is almost 15 years ago, mm. there was no such thing as social media. Yeah, so I relied totally heavily on doing a really good job and getting recommendations so from pure that. Word and that's of mouth and pure word yeah. of mouth. That's how I started my business. Yeah. And that's almost 15 years ago now. So like my my um, clientele was my marketing tool and that's how I use them. And that's, but Anne, I that's totally how agree I started. With you on that because like there, you know, you do hear stories sometimes through the grapevine where yes, their work may be good, but maybe their personality doesn't Absolutely. match. Absolutely. And you maybe their gel. timings weren't great, you know, mm-hmm. and people have had, you know, negative experiences, mm-hmm. you know, so it is good to hear the feedback you know yeah. from people about how the morning went as yeah. opposed to how the makeup looked in yeah. the end as yeah. well you know well I'm um, always conscious that I'm in somebody else's home I'm in a bride's yeah. home so usually there can be not always but a lot of the time there could be drama going on you can't get involved <laughs> in any of that so you want somebody who's very calm as well who's not get, going to get involved in any well, of like, that drama that's just going to sit back and kind of you know what I mean? Take yeah. control of Well, the, the hair situation. and the makeup, I always say, are, they're the first two people that you meet on the morning of the wedding. Mm, we yeah. we set yeah. the tone, you know, Absolutely. hair and makeup, you know. Yeah. If you're coming in all in a fluster because you're late or whatever, yeah, you're exactly. obviously going to bring the, the, the tone <laughs> yeah. down quite yeah, a smack, exactly. you know. Yeah. So yeah. You could just panic the yeah, bride. And I suppose that's the thing. You want somebody who is, number one, reliable, mm. who will be there on time. Because I find if makeup runs behind, Everything runs behind, hair runs behind, if the hair runs behind, the photographer runs behind, if he runs behind, the church runs behind. Yeah, exactly. If the church runs behind, the food runs behind, yeah. the yeah. band runs behind. So, so it starts of, yeah, with hair and makeup. So what, what time so would you normally start with, say, at a bride's house? If a, if a wedding was one o'clock, usually, and we say generally it's five or six we do in the morning of a wedding, it can be more, it can be less. So it really just depends. If it's a one o'clock wedding, I'd usually be there maybe half seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. and then I we kind of work. I I do in, like I do my maths kind mm-hmm. of. I like to have all my bridal party ready an hour at least before the ceremony. There's always that hour for getting dressed. <coughs> um, but you always have to take into consideration. Um, do they have to drive far for their ceremony? So that time has to be taken off as well. There's Absolutely. always an hour to get dressed and take photos. Yeah. So if they've got a half an hour journey, that means everybody has to be ready an hour and a half before. Yeah. So then you just allocate whatever time in it would take to do per person. Then you count backwards then and yeah. you allow exactly. for a kind of leeway in case something, you know, they need to get their breakfast or somebody has a meltdown yeah, or, exactly. or mm-hmm. just that things can kind of, people can be very relaxed as well. Yeah. So that's how I work it. But yeah, it could start anything from... Absolutely. 7 a.m., you yeah. know, but I would say you don't sleep the morning of your wedding anyway, yeah, so get no, up and at them, yeah, like, you know, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think that would say, like, from a from, from photographer point of view, would say we generally won't take photographs until their hair and makeup is done mm. anyway. I love so, photographers like that, <laughs> yeah. I love them. Yeah. So, any photographers listening, yes, please yeah, yeah, yeah. take note, yeah, <laughs> take, take note. note, no photographs without makeup, please. Yeah, because I, I think I think yeah. it's unfair, we say, and, and it is I know we say some photographers like they, they like the documentary style and the whole lot, but yeah. I think when it comes to who you wants know, to see the picture of themselves with the rollers and the hair and I, no, I know I didn't yeah. anyway yeah. so it's, it's quite good like that I think yeah, yeah that is very important yeah and so. I think that's that's maybe brides might learn that from, from listening to us this evening mm. Um, just to mention that to your photographer, please don't take photographs until I have at least our videographers, our videographers, <laughs> until you have a certain amount of makeup on. Yeah, you exactly. know, by all means, once the foundation a little bit of blusher is on, you know, if you're yeah. doing yeah. the eyes. And would you would you whatever. normally start on the bride first or start with I the, the bridesmaids first? Or? No, no, I usually maybe if there's four bridesmaids, I'll do two brides, two bridesmaids, a bride, 
and then the last two bridesmaids and then mother of the bride is usually last. That's right. how I work it, but okay. you might be different, Charlene, do you? Um, I, it, yeah, it's very dependent on the yeah. girl themselves. Um, again, like that, um, it all depends on how many people there are to do. Mm. It depends on what time their hairdresser is arriving at as well. I like to, like a tip that I normally give my brides is that I don't like them to be last in the chair because if you're rushing or if anything gets delayed, you know, you don't want them to be panicked. But at the same time, um, I like to kind of look at them and say, you know, I like them to have their makeup done before they get their hair done because I hear it over and over again where it is, you know, your hair will look nicer when your makeup is done, your hair will look, you know, and I'm always like, well, they're normally sitting in front of a mirror. So at that stage, they get half an hour, 40 minutes to sit in front of the mirror while getting their hair done. They're not as anxious about their hair or their makeup, you know, because they're getting to take it all in. And those few minutes to take in their makeup, then at the end, if they decide they want something different or they need something changed, they have time to kind of come back rather than it yeah. being, you know, rushed. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I usually say to the bride like that, if the photographer is arriving at a certain time, I usually say, do you want your makeup done before your photographer arrives? Yeah, exactly. Just in case the photographer might just get a little bit too snap happy kind yeah, of on the morning. Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. So normally it just puts ideas is into their head that they might not realise like you know some for some brides this is their first experience exactly. with yeah. a wedding yeah. morning and they haven't a notion how it's going so I think us as the yeah. experts we just need to guide them into it and mm -hmm. tell our experiences of how like and every house is different that you go into you yeah, know exactly. um, I think there's one thing we just we've, we, we, we kind of mentioned at the start is that we are live on Facebook that it, it, it's an interactive mm -hmm. show so just kind of there was one or two questions that have come in there uh, there's a question here for Anne uh, from Thank Gillette you. at Gillette Weddings here in okay. the US, summer heat and humidity is a major problem for my brides, causing makeup to look less than perfectly, less than perfect quickly. Any recommendations for keeping it fresh and dry during the day? Okay, well, I suppose when you're in a hot climate like that, you need like um, a good primer underneath your foundation, preferably an oil-free primer. Um, Laura Mercier do a really nice oil-free primer, so maybe something like that. Um, it just creates a barrier between the skin and your foundation. It just helps it to last a little bit longer. Um, and also to use maybe an oil-free foundation as well. Um, something like that might really help. It'll reduce shine. And um, to keep a little powder on hand, maybe, you know, have it in your bridesmaid's bag or something like that, that you can actually just powder down the makeup, mm. you know, just after the ceremony. And um, that's basically it. Just a really good primer underneath. And I suppose prepare the skin in advance, you know, just keep on top of your skincare. Um, and have plenty of facials and just get your skin in the best condition that it can possibly be in for your big day. I think that will make a big difference. But definitely um, an oil-free primer should help, should really help. Very good, very good. Okay. Um, one question we had from a girl who wants to get into becoming a makeup artist. How do they start? Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, talk to the expert because she's the expert on social media. <laughs> I'm, I'm more foggy now at this stage. Yeah. When I started, as I said before, um, it was all word of mouth. It was just... You know, if I started my business, I'd have to put an advertisement in the paper and all of that. Yeah. Um, now, I think it's it's very different. You can just do a makeup course and you can upload your profile and you can set up a business page go, yeah. and away you go. But I think to become a makeup artist, I think to... I, th I think generally a lot of people have it naturally in their hands. I think you just, you're passionate about makeup. I think, you know, find yourself a really good course and maybe tag along with the makeup artist like the likes of myself or Charlene. Spend some time. I think you'll learn a lot from an experienced makeup artist mm -hmm. and just to practice, practice, practice. And I think the day you think you know it all is the day you can just forget about it because you're constantly learning. Like I'm a long time doing it and so are you, Charlene. Um, and we're still learning. There's, yeah. you know, in the beauty industry, it's it's ever evolving there's there's so much to learn and there's so many new products out there so it's it's just one of those things but i just think just keep learning you know keep yeah. practicing keep practicing all that, yeah. i think mm -hmm. definitely for me it would be definitely yeah go do a course but please don't be um of the thought that when you leave that course that you're going to be mm -hmm. an expert you know yeah. i did yeah. my course and as much as i enjoyed it and i learned the root of everything that i still hold with me today mm -hmm. but it's all about the practice, practice that you put into it yourself afterwards and i've seen how i've progressed mm -hmm. over you know the years that i've been doing makeup and sometimes i even look back originally I know, and <laughs> you kind of go how did anyone think i was good at all you know even though yeah. like like makeup has obviously advanced so much mm -hmm. as well but um 
I think just practice on any yeah. face that you can get. Um, just throw in all your sisters and mm. your cousins or friends or even advertise out there and say to people, look, don't be under the impression that I'm going to be an experienced makeup artist. I'm, I'm using you for, you know, my, yeah, my practice exactly. mm-hmm. and, yeah. and try it that way. And yeah. just try not to get too bogged down. Like there's a lovely quote, I think, where it's like, don't um, compare your beginning to somebody's highlight reel. Mm. Don't look yeah, at somebody exactly. that's been in the industry, like, you know, yeah, five, exactly. six years and kind of go, why aren't I where they am? Just mm-hmm. focus on your own journey mm-hmm. and take your time, baby steps at a time and just always be a nice, positive person as well. Mm-hmm. I think in the industry, I think there's too much negativity sometimes mm-hmm. and people can get jealous and competitive. Yeah. So just focus mm-hmm. on your own thing and just, you know, if you love what you do, it'll all come through and people will feed off that as well. So would, would And I fo- think to be unique as well, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. to have your style of makeup. I have my own style of makeup. People yeah. might like it, they may not like it, but you know it's 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 but my you're not thing for everybody yeah. 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 absolutely you have to that's that, just yeah. it you know? yeah. some people will love your work and some people will hate mm-hmm. your work would, would you find I a, a lot of be... there's a lot of expectations out there we say oh, in regarding yes. to kind yeah. of they see what they see on on social media instagram yeah. facebook absolutely. Like that, and yeah. they kind of come to you and say i want to look like this absolutely. you know, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. we get that every weekend every weekend yeah kim kardashian shows up quite a lot i'm like jesus if i could turn myself into her you have to be you have to say to your client you know they have to be realistic you know, you're, I'm working on your face, it's your skin, it's, uh, you know, it's your eye shape. I can only work with what I have in front of me. Mm. You know, so I, some people have unrealistic yeah. You know, I think expectations, as well, it's important to look. I look at the picture because the last thing I want is for somebody to come in and show a picture and for you to nearly be patronizing towards them and kind of yeah. say, no way, Jose. So mm-hmm. I think you just have to pull elements of it and describe to them what that makeup actually is. Mm-hmm. I sometimes would explain to the bride, now there's quite a lot of eyeliner on that. They might not realize yeah. it because the That's model true. could have quite yeah. large eyes. Yeah. Or I get a lot of people that look at my wedding day makeup and my wedding day makeup was quite dramatic in terms of wedding makeup, you know, mm-hmm. but that's what I wanted my winged liner I had my liner in the waterline I had my fake lashes I had everything on me and people always look at it and go your wedding makeup is beautiful can I have that so I'm like okay so I have to describe to them what that makeup is and then once they hear eyeliner you know in the mm-hmm. waterline wings and all well, this kind of then they kind of they're like oh okay so it's just about explaining it mm-hmm. to people really and just showing and that, that yeah. actually leads us I into suppose. our next question Adele yeah. yeah so Adele what's the next question there the next one we were going to look at is what what skincare regime to use now from say if I'm starting from now until New Year's Eve till my big day what will I go for what is the main things I should use Right. Well, you have loads of time. You're not getting married until Christmas. So really, now is the time to start getting your skin in the tip top condition. I think just looking after the skin, cleansing, particularly cleansing. I think that's the one step that really makes a huge difference to the overall finish of your skin. A good deep cleanse, probably a double cleanse at night going to bed. And I love to use a nice creamy cleanser and a nice hot face gloss. I think there's nothing as yeah. nice and refreshing yeah, as a so hot. Clean because it does yeah. two things. It cleanses the skin, but it also exfoliates the skin. And also maybe a couple of facials, um, exfoliating facial. facials, yeah. something like that. Good, deep exfoliating facials, depending on your skin type. You know what I mean? Okay. Some people, um, if you have problematic skin, you don't. Your skin is beautiful. But I think something nice and hydrating for you, something to brighten skin, lots of vitamin C, you know, something that's going to help to nourish and hydrate your, your skin would be ideal for you. Um, and SPF, of course, yeah. very, very important. And I think to avoid sunbeds at all costs mm-hmm. coming up to your wedding, I just think they're very, very damaging on the skin, mm-hmm. particularly you because you're quite fair-skinned and it can just... I just don't think... I think as well, a top tip for the skin that I sometimes... You always nearly cringe when Mm. you do say it sometimes to brides is to be very careful of the alcohol content in the lead up to the wedding as well because alcohol does dehydrate the skin. And I can always tell the morning of the wedding, I know the 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 people that have had... Yeah, I can (laughs) always tell when they've had the one too many because their skin just soaks up the the makeup. still looks lovely, but they are more dehydrated. But like you could be so religious and so good with your diet plan and then all of a sudden, two weeks before the wedding, everybody wants to wine and dine you you're going out for meals Mm. and then all of a sudden you might be prone to breakouts you know because you're eating rich food that you weren't eating in the lead up so just to be mindful like we're not saying like we're not grannies and we're not saying you know to stay in and don't do anything but just everything and you know I think if your your skincare is good um, kind of I always say your home care routine if you're persistent with it um, not just like a last minute kind of four week kind of a thing you know Mm. then Mm. you can be guaranteed that like it just makes our lives so much easier when you have a nice canvas to work on when you have a nice hydrated skin you know it's much easier to do a nice 
um, makeup on a skin that's nice, you know, well hydrated. Mm. It's very are difficult you to do foundation. Adele, I would say, you know, are you, are you doing any facials? Well, I'm moment? I'm a huge fan of Dermalogica, anyways. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would I would always stick. You know, we we actually do it in in the pharmacy. Mm-hmm. So I never really got into it until until it arrived in in with us. And, you know, trying out little bits here and there. And I'm just a huge fan of skincare anyways. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I always look after it. And yeah. now having a one and a half year old at home, I don't get too much of a chance, you know. So that's my main aim now is to get back into it, cleansing, tone and moisturizing. And, you know, I also love a microfoliant like this scrub. The daily yeah. microfoliant. The daily it's, microfoliant. it's fabulous. You know, mm-hmm. you can really, it's like a layer of skin just comes off. And that, it dissolves yeah. the dead layer as opposed it to does. scratching it off. So it's ideal it for does. anybody with a sensitive skin. It's very, very good. And it has yeah skin brighteners through it as well mm. um, so it's really really good I particularly think, um, for brides one product I always would recommend to my brides is the hyaluronic acid serum yeah. um, mm-hmm. I find no matter if you're oily if you're dry if you're sensitive everybody can use a hyaluronic acid serum yeah. um, don't be afraid of the word acid either it's not as um, daunting yeah, as what it is daunting. everybody you can apply hyaluronic acid yeah. um, as many times as you want throughout the day and it's like a drink for the skin it basically mm-hmm. just goes you know, plumps out the skin. We actually so, do one, Charlene, the Pestle Mortar one. Love, it's oh, absolutely lovely. fabulous, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it yeah. just literally, you put it onto your skin mm-hmm. and it just soaks in. You and I think that's what people it. love. Yeah. There's no uh, there's no mess or anything like that. And even men like can that. wear it, Richard, I if you're looking for a bit of plump. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's for the men as well, absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. The hyaluronic, yeah. I find it absolutely amazing. And I do recommend it to all my brides because it can be no matter what skin type you are um yeah it holds up to its uh, it holds does. up to a thousand times its weight in water it so does. basically it's just going to keep the skin so plump and so hydrated okay. so whether you're oily or not it's completely oil free um so it's a re- it's a really it great is. product so the yeah. pest and the mortar it one is, is the it's one fabulous. that I, it's easier yeah. can I just say as well yeah. just for the brides out there please don't go trying anything on the morning of your wedding don't try a new face mask that a friend has given you or don't be trying any new creams or something that you haven't tried you know, before don't yeah, minute. don't go trying anything like that in the morning of your wedding because I've seen I've seen it all on the morning of a wedding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Disasters like that where Face somebody would use something that have a reaction. Yeah, and the same bit. if they're going to have some waxing or stuff like that done, have it done the previous week, you know, and give your skin a little time bit of time it, yeah. just to settle. Yeah. And they're just little tips for brides, you know, yeah. just and the same, don't yeah. be having facials the week of your wedding, have yeah. them maybe the week previous as well. I, I think we'll say that that's one thing I suppose we need to address is like I'm not in a way here like I understand everything you're saying <laughs> yeah. but I'm assuming that's what you're on about in a lot but is there a case of that we we'll say a lot of a lot of women will say they have their own expectations in regards to that they know their makeup they know their skin and the mm-hmm. whole lot we we'll say is there a case of a kind of education that would we'll say when you are talking to brides where do you start with brides we'll say once once you meet with them the whole lot really and starting their style yeah. Or, yeah. or what they want to do generally when a bride comes to me when she books me for her wedding I will do a skincare consultation with her. I'll go through her skin and I'll just... And it's not a sales pitch either. It's just to inform her yeah. of her skin type and what she should and shouldn't be using. And I just advise her on some, you know, tips for her... Um, just to, to cleanse the skin and how to look after her skin. And I give her a little home care programme as well. Mm-hmm. And um, just give her general advice. And, and then we just talk... The wedding or... It really it depends. Uh, you know, it's a good idea... Generally, brides, when they book me, it could be a year in advance, mm-hmm. it could be six months in advance. It really just depends. So it's usually when, when we meet for the first time, I usually go through all of that with them. Mm-hmm. And um, I just give them as many tips as I possibly can. Yeah. I suppose you it know, is the earlier the better, I suppose. The it is earlier for you guys the better. You can and, kind of start yeah, that, and then you get problem. an idea of their skin. And it's just, yeah. it's you know... Actually, actually, it was my hair and makeup that I actually went for nearly first straight mm-hmm. away. It was like, this is so important as mm-hmm. well. So it was, it was a huge, a huge That's decision at the yeah. start, you know. Yeah. So That's yeah, good. for me anyway, I I do put. Who did your makeup, Charlene, for your wedding? I did my own makeup. Oh, oh. I thought you would have booked me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very Pure upset. I didn't get that phone call. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get that um, phone call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I normally would say in the initial email to my brides that I would like them to come to me at least three months in advance because mm-hmm. if there is any advice that I need to give them, I think 12 weeks is kind of enough time for them to still have, not emergency skincare, but you know, if it's like that they're coming to you and their skin is in a little bit of a rough condition or maybe they don't realise how dry or dehydrated their skin actually is, 12 weeks is a lot of time to turn it around. So yeah, exactly. that sometimes isn't the case because I have a lot 
lot of brides that are abroad and they come home but a lot of brides like that like as Anne said they do email me and they ask me for my advice yeah. you know so mm-hmm. and I normally just say just yeah. find out who the expert is in your area in skincare you know and just Absolutely. but I think a lot of people don't um, they don't budget for, for the skincare side of it either you know and it can it can build up it can yeah. it can yeah. be really Pretty expensive, expensive. <laughs> you know so um, just you know Something perhaps to maybe talk into. to your makeup artist mm-hmm. and find out like Anne does obviously the skincare as well mm-hmm. but I don't you know but yeah. I, I know the people in certain towns and certain counties that I've heard over and over again using the brands that I yeah. know and love myself so ask your makeup artist you know who would they recommend yeah. just because you go to a girl for your eyebrows and things like that doesn't necessarily mean that you know she's going to be yeah. the same person that you go to for your facials and stuff Absolutely, so yeah. it's no harm just to ask and just mm-hmm. to shop around a small true, bit you know true, so true. Um, a few more from uh, Facebook uh, let me see we go back here uh, Imelda Scali great show tonight uh, well done ladies great advice thank you uh, Olivia McMahon great advice Charlene uh, uh, Nathan White love 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 Anne oh. so loads of love for you Anna. <laughs> you're the fan Anne you're the fan <laughs> uh, Queenie King what tips would you give to the mother of the bride or more mature women mm-hmm. would be, who would be a guest oh yeah alright is that, is that for me? No. Uh, well, we'll, we'll try Charlene then. <laughs> for the mother of the bride. Okay, so mother so of bride or mature woman. For a mature a woman. Guest, so definitely for me, I find that the mother of the brides can be a little bit anxious and a little bit kind of nervous about getting mm-hmm. their makeups done. Um, so... I actually have found more of a trend where the mothers are coming along to the trial with the brides, either getting their makeup done or while they're there, they just ask you kind of like what, what you think. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the mothers, um, they don't wear makeup day to day. Most of them didn't even wear makeup on their own wedding day, you know, so they are quite daunted at the illusion that they're going to be made up you know and they don't want that they want a very natural paired back look and um, so I think it's just a case that I just try to instill kind of a bit of confidence into the you know the mother of the bride or like if there's any mature lady looking to go for it I think less is more um, I think go for a nice light fluid water based foundation um, on the skin get a, a good primer on the skin as well just to smooth it out and um, so mm. the foundation just glides over it um, don't be afraid to put a bit of colour onto the cheeks even if it's just a bronzer or a bit of blush um, a lot of um, mature ladies are afraid to put colour on their cheeks because they think it makes them look red Um, but it is it just um, defines and sculpts the skin um and then for the eyes and things, I think the definition is really important. I like to fill in the brows ever so slightly um, using really light tones. And um, uh, I do I do try and talk a lot of the mother of the brides into getting individual lashes on because I think it just lifts the eye. It's like a mini eye lift, like straight away. Some of them aren't for it. Some of them are. Um, I've had some mother of the brides that are hooked on them now, you know, after getting them done. But um, just, you know, explain to the makeup artist, you know, what you are and kind of, you know, how you normally wear makeup. Um, I always ask them what yeah. do you wear yourself do you put eyeshadow on do you wear eyeliner do you know have you sensitive eyes do you wear glasses are you mm. wearing glasses today are you wearing contact lenses so just um i always think less is more try and avoid too many shimmer based products on the eyes as well because the shimmer can actually highlight the lines and the wrinkles um, mm. so it can actually show up and age you even more so just nice neutral earthy tones like the browns kind of even the gray kind of you know pastel kind of colors mm. and i think you know just less is definitely more for me anyway yeah. um just a nice good i don't know do you Mm-hmm. Brianne, but I think lots of cream, cream, cream highlighter, yeah. cream brush, blusher is really, really good on a mature skin. Dewy as well. kind of finish, dewy, like yeah. a dewy moisturized nice finish, hydrated look. Yeah, yeah. And would, would they? Would a lot of like the the mums of the bride come to the trials? Would you find that? They, yeah, they I would find that a lot yeah. of them do sit in. I think they're quite nervous because, as you said, yeah. they mm-hmm. probably didn't wear makeup on their wedding day, yeah. and they don't normally wear makeup. So it is a big thing. It yeah. is. And makeup has advanced so much. Absolutely. You always hear yeah. about the rouge. Yeah, the yeah. rouge all those years ago. You know, but um. I just think as well, um, you know, like the makeup artist that you do choose on the day, I think that's an important factor for the bride to even consider Mm -hmm. as well. I even have some mother of the brides that they go and get their makeup done with their local beauty therapist. And I don't take it personally if they decide to go and get their makeup done with somebody else. You know, it's just that's what they're used to and they're happy enough with that, you know. So either have the trial yourself with the makeup artist that, you know, your your daughter or whoever it is and, um, and just try it from there and just explain exactly what you want and how you want it. And, you know, you can't go too far wrong with that then. I have to apologize. I uh, didn't read that properly. It was not Nathan White. It was Natalie White. Oh, oh, so, <laughs> so sorry, Natalie. I'm so sorry. Hello, Natalie. It looks like a male the fan text is too on. small. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing I do okay. want to do is I want to mention the, the competition that we're having tonight. Uh, we have these lovely products in front of us here that we're going to be giving away. Um, I suppose uh, we're going to be asking for questions as well from social media. Um, so if anybody has any questions for the girls, 
please uh, comment on the, the live feed and we'll, we'll see it coming up and we can put those questions to the girls. Mm -hmm. um, how, uh, we say with the competition, how can they win these products, Mick? Yeah, oh, so we need to you. So you need to check one of the earlier posts. Yeah, and we give one away to one, anyone that asks a question. Okay, and we're giving one away to uh, anyone who uh, one of the lovely people who are asking good questions. questions. Yeah, good questions. A good, good question. question. So we need good questions. If you want to win one of the prizes, you need to ask a really good question. Okay. Um, no pressure. <laughs> I suppose, Adele, we'll probably move on to the next question there. What, uh, okay, what I, suppose, I suppose another one that kind of stands out for me and is big time is, you know, the thought of walking up the aisle and crying. So <laughs> what happens then? I was listening um, last night. I was trying to choose, you know, what, what song we'll have going up the aisle. And I was crying. And I was thinking... What will I do on the morning of my wedding? You invite your makeup artist to the wedding. Absolutely, Anne. Yeah. You're coming. <laughs> <laughs> of course. No, I, yeah. I, I find the opposite. I would say I have brides who kind of said to me, if he's not crying, then, you know, yeah. I'll put him crying. You know, so it, it, it's one of these things. I, I think, think he'll cry emotion. when he sees me. So, you yeah. know, yeah. But it is some, I suppose from a photography point of view as well, we're yeah. kind of watching out for that, that we're hoping that they're not going to be bawling coming down the aisle. Yeah. You know, very so difficult. It's well, very difficult. I think it's, it is, is, it is, it is very is rare different. that people actually ball, though. Like, do people ball? Yes. Mm, do yeah, they? Yeah, a couple of times, you know. I, that's I know why I always have just look forward. Just keep looking straight ahead, you know. Mm -hmm. just yeah. you know, and But a lot of times, it's, it's yeah, everybody's looking left and right, and they're kind of enjoying mm. the moment coming up yeah. the aisle. Is it just a waterproof mascara, or, you know, is it, you know, is there something else you can use to kind of... Stop it all can we, running. Can we yeah. stop the tears? For, yeah. Well, for me, anyway, I definitely find... That, well, there's a, a product that I recommend all my brides have with them for touch-ups throughout the day, and that's the MAC Studio Fix Powder. Um, mm -hmm. I find it brilliant for touching up the skin. And even even under the Certainly eyes, if you cry, you know, it's it's a powder foundation, you see. So it's not um, it's not uh, talc-based. So, like, it's not going to make the skin look really dry. It still keeps it hydrated. Mm -hmm. And then if you are the type of person that is liable to cry and gets quite red, I would normally recommend bring along, like, a nude water waterline pencil like an eyeliner pencil so that if you do get red do you know like obviously you're not going to be able to top it up in the church do you know but like <laughs> you, you know after, Sorry, after Father, the, hold on a second, yeah yeah hang on a second there <laughs> after the church though before you're about to leave for your photographs take you know two three minutes with your mm. bridesmaids make sure or even give the products to the photographer because the photographer's always around you anyway so give it to him yeah. on the morning um, I'm sure camera, you've been given that job before yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like a nude a nude eyeliner yeah. I think if you haven't got your black kind of eyeliner in the waterline but definitely the powder underneath the Definitely eyes and, really and dab mm -hmm. never rub I always say to them don't you know yeah. when you're even dabbing with the tissue just always press it against the skin mm -hmm. don't wipe or okay. move because mm -hmm. then it just moves yeah. the product away do you know oh, just I think if you put pressure on the tear duct as well either side if you oh. put pressure yeah. and just tilt your head back ever so slightly it just it just prevents you from you know if you know somebody's just going to cry if yeah. you just get yeah. them just beforehand if you just press on the tear duct and the same on the outside with a little tissue it'll just yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's something it actually is. that I, I came across in a wedding recently where, and I never thought about it before, is that, um, I, I, you know, we say when we were doing the family photographs and the whole lot, mm -hmm. like a bride probably hasn't looked in the mirror since mm -hmm. she's left Absolutely, the house. Absolutely, yeah. So it's good to have a mirror or, or have one of the bridesmaids to have her makeup handy yeah. that if she does want to do a quick touch-up, yeah. that, you know, she can go into sacristy or go to the, the toilets and, and, exactly. and get, you know, yeah. do a little touch-up. Mm -hmm. um, would you find that a, a lot of brides would say, you know, that you would have products that they take with them on the day mm. to do their touch-ups generally yeah. yeah generally when they come for their trial whatever lipstick and lip liner lip gloss you're using they will take them away with them and again i'd always recommend that they have like a little you know touching press powder, powder just for touching mm. up yeah yeah but generally when there's a good primer and there's a good serum on, on the on the skin very little touch-up is needed yeah. Yeah. exactly i think yeah. it's yeah. only if they like blow their nose or something yeah. after having tears you know then it can obviously yeah, very move little. you know off the skin but um, the little compact, it's great because it actually comes with a sponge built into the bottom and it comes with a little mirror. So like even if you only had that one, yeah. you don't have to be carrying a brush I'd and a mirror on, yeah. and the whole lot kind of yeah. with you, you know. So I, I find it a godsend anyway, you know, for, for myself. Because yeah. mm -hmm. um, even when you come out of the church, a lot of people don't even realize that after the kissing, like, you know, I had, like, beard rash, like, on the side of my face, you know? <laughs> all down one side. Um, yeah. yeah, all down. And they all Lipstick. go for the one side, you know? So you do Not have to, to be conscious. And it's well, just yeah. before you go for your pictures, <laughs> yeah. you know? So you do have to be conscious of it. Now, on the day of my wedding, being a makeup artist, it was so funny. Like, I had no heat on my makeup whatsoever. Yeah. It was my sister that was actually kept coming up on Charlene. Like, she handed me the foundation brush and was like you need to fix that like but sure I was so oblivious I yeah. just was enjoying it and be, and yeah, in the can, moment but yeah. like that for your photos and stuff um, 
you know, it is important that, you know, you obviously, you've gone to all that effort and the last thing you want then is your photo, your first photographs as husband and wife. You want them to yeah. be absolutely perfect, mm-hmm. you know. And so. I don't want to be spending hours in Photoshop either yeah, as well. So, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. More better it is. Thank God for Photoshop. You know, yeah. Save yeah. me hours. Yeah. I actually thought I would cry on the day of my wedding, but I actually didn't, which really surprised, didn't That's shed good. one tear, do you know. Very good. Um, like I got halfway up the aisle and when I seen my husband, I kind of did a, do you know, but yeah. I just was like, come right. on to yourself, Charlene, do you know, don't ruin the makeup. That was all yeah. that was in my head, mm-hmm. don't ruin the makeup, don't ruin the makeup. I think if I keep know? that in my head as yeah, well, you have I to think be vain I think, yeah, on the day. You have to be vain on your wedding day. You have to always yeah. think, no, yeah. you know, I paid enough for this, you know, it's like, but yeah, don't try not to worry yeah. about it yeah. too much. No, yeah. that's good. You listen good. to your song, Walking Up the Aisle, that many times that like the day of the wedding, you won't even hear it when you're walking up the aisle, you know, so try not to worry too much. You will cry in the lead up, but like you mightn't cry on No, that's really good tips. Yeah, really good tips. Crying all the way while the makeup artist is still at the house. Well, that's it. Oh, that is another tip, actually. (laughs) If the husband has a present for the bride or like a lovely love note, please send it. Or the bridesmaids, (laughs) please give it to the bride. Now, Craig, if you're listening. She hasn't had her makeup done and she's opened this present. You know, I can't get those photographs, those real emotional photographs. We can do pretend ones. We can do the pretend ones. We can stage it again for you. She's well, not I crying again. You can't take the photo no, without, without the tears. Yeah. Without do. the tears. Yeah. Well, that's quite good. Yeah. I think we, we, did, we mentioned a lot of times here about trials and, and doing the makeup yeah. trials beforehand. Mm-hmm. We say, how important are the makeup trials? We say, very. It, it, it's something that we actually, it was uh, debated on a previous episode where we had one bride who was uh, all for the makeup trials and one bride who kind of said, you know, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it, you know? So I suppose it's something that we kind of, we do stress that, like we say, mm. it's like a practice. So, you know, it, yeah. it's something that, the more things you can make sure are going to be going right on the day, the better. Mm. Yeah, so you like don't want to be foostering around on the morning. You want to have your makeup. You know what I mean? You want to have your look pinned down. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? You want to have a chat with your bride and see what she likes, what she doesn't like, mm-hmm. you know, and makeup is so personal. You know, what suits one person won't suit another. Exactly. So it's very important to meet with your bride beforehand. So that's why I think trials are very, very important. Mm. Um, just to iron out what they like, what they don't like. You know, you might have a bride who likes a very, very natural makeup, who doesn't normally wear makeup. So that's very, very important information. Mm-hmm. So you need to, you know what I mean, come up with a look that's really going to suit her and to suit her personality. Mm-hmm. And the same and, and the same with somebody who wears a lot of makeup. Um, if you were to do something quite minimal on her, she would feel, she just wouldn't even feel like herself. Mm-hmm. So you just have to be very, very careful. And it just, you get to know your bride as well. And you see what they like and what they don't like. It's just, yeah. it's really important. I, w- I kind of well like I do think it's important from the makeup artist's perspective mm-hmm. but also I find it's not until like the fortnight before the wedding that that's when the anxiety starts to kind mm-hmm. of set in and normally at that stage you know either you know your dates as a makeup artist is booked or whatever it might be but um, I think it depends on the person themselves I find the people that normally don't have a trial with me are people that wear a lot of makeup so they're not afraid of it mm-hmm. you know so I find that you know, when you go there on the morning, it depends on how many people you have on that morning as well. If you have a bridal party of seven people to do that morning, you don't have time for a little mini consultation with her. Whereas if you have a smaller bridal party of maybe four, you probably could factor in an extra 20 minutes to kind of chat with her or have 20 minutes at the end to say, do you want a little bit more? Do you want a little bit less? But I wouldn't recommend to not have a trial because I think it puts both parties at ease. I think, you know, as Anne said, makeup is so personal, you know, and it's up to us. The last thing, we want to be there on the day and you know getting the head at off you because you didn't meet their expectation yeah. or whatever and you know how far ahead would say would you normally recommend the makeup trials is it something that they do six months in ahead uh, advance or it really depends mm. because some brides are abroad and you may mm. not meet them until the week beforehand yeah so it really really depends on the bride themselves yeah, their time right um, i like to meet them a little bit in advance just to kind of get to know them have a look at their skin again give them some skincare advice yeah. so it's probably if they're local I do ask them to come down and we can have a little chat um, but sometimes you know if, if they're brides from abroad you may not meet them until a couple of days before the wedding yeah. you know and there has been cases yeah. where some brides didn't have trials yeah. yeah, you know, and they're usually very relaxed brides, and they're comfortable, yes. and they're yeah. and they're you know they're they have confidence yeah, in you. They kind of trust you, um, and they kind of let you do yeah, your thing. Yeah, and, and some well. some brides have no idea about makeup, and they'll just say, "Do whatever you think," yeah. which is great, and I love brides <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's not always the case. Yeah, you know, it's it's makeup is so personal. We could talk all night about makeup. Yeah. It's so personal. Well, we, we have tons and tons of questions coming in. Right. Um, so I suppose we're going to start with. There's a little controversial one. We say, "What are your thoughts on Botox?" 
anything Botox, it's 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 a personal thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? If 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 Somebody if you have to. lines on your forehead and they're really really bothering you, and your wedding is coming up, if you have if you want to get rid of them lines, why not have Botox? Yeah. Yeah. And, and of the same thought, I'm like, I think yeah, it's if, completely if it's, personal choice. Yeah. If you want, most people that consider Botox something is really getting them down something is really bothering them yeah, exactly. you know so yeah. I just think if it makes you feel comfortable I've had plenty of brides you know that have but gone and had maybe ahead of the wedding oh absolutely ahead of the wedding. Well, yeah well, yeah. yeah you'd often see it a good six months kind of you know mm. or even you know three to four months kind of even before just to you know obviously do your research you know yeah. don't just go and to any person something that you would have done um, two or three weeks in advance you no. probably need to have it done if you were getting married we'd say in six months time you'd probably have it done in three months and then you'd have it done topped up again yeah. maybe before You're the wedding about, yeah. it's not something that you would do like a quick fix two yeah, weeks exactly. before the wedding yeah. some you brides know, that even consider it though that get engaged obviously within time they'll trial it out maybe a year before you know yeah. see how they like it you know so mm-hmm. it's well in advance and then maybe closer to the time as Anne said yeah. you can get your top up done but like just do your research on who it is oh, that you're going to it's very um, important you know no, obviously go to somebody that maybe you've seen kind of the work not just pictures you know maybe somebody that has gone and been to the person and had good results mm-hmm. um, because obviously you have to be very careful of reactions allergic reactions but like I'm like all for it if you want Botox <laughs> absolutely you for there's girl, nothing that can't yeah. be fixed yeah. and absolutely. same with lip filler I mean there's yeah. a lot of young girls um, now having their lips filled and if that's what you want then by all means yeah. you know it's all if it personal. makes you feel better then go for then it then go for it yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's not get too into controversial there, not really. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, like, I could see the sweat beads yeah. coming. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the next one actually was going to question I was going to ask you anyway as well. But um, Emma Ni Duvda, I presume I spelled, I pronounced that right. But uh, Emma basically was asking thoughts on tanning before getting your makeup done oh, or makeup. Right. So yeah. is that something we say tanning? I suppose a, a, again, it's, it's something that would say some people do self tan, some people get it professionally done. Mm-hmm. Is it something that would say? Yeah, is it one of your pet peeves that would say like does it interfere with the no. makeup? No, no, I love tan. Yeah. I absolutely love yeah. tan. You know I would nearly, uh, most of my brides would wear a tan. Yeah. I'm sure the same with yours, yeah. Charlie. Yeah. Majority would wear a tan. And then there's other girls who just don't like it. They, they, they just don't like the feel of it. They don't like the smell of it. Mm. Um, I, I do always encourage just a very light tan. Not, yeah. not Nothing, you know, too but over Have top, you any favourite tan that, you'd, loads. Yeah, that you'd recommend? <laughs> I have loads. <laughs> I think for brides, um, my favourite is Vita Liberata. It's it's organic. There's no smell. It's very natural. I love it. Is that near Costa love... Del No. Uh, yeah, just just below it. Just below it. <laughs> and there's Saint Tropez. Um, I love Saint Tropez. Yeah. I, um, I yeah. love Lancome. I absolutely love. That's probably my one of my favourites. Um, I love Coco Brown as well. Yeah. It's really nice. Um, what else? I love Hishi would be another favourite of mine. Of mine. And it, it's yeah. something that is as important, I would say, very. It, it, that they, they, they use. And very important that you get right yeah. as well. Get it done right, you know. It can be, you know, the spray tan or any kind of tan can go very, very wrong. Mm. So you really, again, it's about preparing the skin, yeah. exfoliating the skin, moisturising the skin, getting it in tip-top condition, mm. because you'll find if you do not put in the preparation for a tan, you can end up with disastrous results and you don't want yeah. that on your wedding and the day. lead up to my wedding mm-hmm. I over exfoliated my skin I was using like this body scrub um, obviously more focused on the fact that I was going on my honeymoon and I was more focused mm-hmm. on like yeah. you know just getting my skin kind of more buff ready uh, for mm-hmm. the bikini and obviously over exfoliated and like I mean say like over exfoliation yeah. and like then the tan just it still came out lovely but it just didn't take you know it didn't I'm usually like mahogany like usually whenever it comes out mm-hmm. but it just didn't it was very light and then obviously I was too afraid to get a second spray in case you know um it, it came out too dark mm-hmm. but uh yeah just I totally agree with you in the prep but just don't so over prep much. either like don't mm-hmm. lather on the moisturizer before you go getting your tan done mm-hmm. and stuff like that you so know? when would, when would you actually trial. when would you actually moisturize then before you go for your tan do you know what I mean on the day of your tan you don't yeah. you don't, you don't, you don't you moisturize don't. because it's it creates a barrier yeah. that actually causes you know it it's, it's a barrier okay. so the tan won't actually penetrate the skin so um, you can moisturise right up until 24 hours before you yeah, have your perfect. tan so even the mm-hmm. evening before before you go to bed yeah. stick your yeah. moisturiser and around. exfoliate then right up until the evening beforehand the evening or, before even, yeah. yeah 24 hours is normally yeah. a guideline mm-hmm. you normally wouldn't yeah. put anything mm-hmm. onto the skin 24 hours in between yeah. so. and just another thing if, if you are going on holidays if you are taking a holiday before um before your big day just to be conscious of when yeah. you're sunbathing not to wear anything with straps that can leave strap marks they're extremely hard to cover mm. particularly for the likes of myself that's just yeah. 
spray tan they're very very hard to cover um, so just to wear you know what I mean strapless all the time strapless and top and yeah. just, yeah, just whatever shape your dress for is just to be conscious exactly of it. yeah yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, staying on the spray tan, Ashton was asking uh, when getting spray tan for your wedding, do you recommend getting spray tan on your face? I do. I do a tiny little bit. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, uh, the tiniest little bit of tan, but you have to be very, very careful. Yeah. You know, some people don't like it on their face. I always like to put a little bit so that it's not stopping here and you have this big white face, just a tiny little bit. And then, you know, I can blend the foundation in to match it then. That's just my personal opinion. You might be different, Charlie. Yeah, you may I, not like a it. little, just a little. Yeah. I just think it depends on the person's skin type. And to be honest, depends on the you. tan you're using. And as the well. tan, yeah. I think if a person is very porous, I think um, avoid perhaps it. avoid it, um, because obviously it's going to sit into the pores around the nose. And if you're the type of bride that perhaps wants a very natural um, foundation, it could end up that you have to mm. end up going for something very full coverage then, because you need to cover the, the darker spots mm-hmm. on the pores. If you've got dry patches on the face, then obviously avoid it because um, you know it'll sit onto those dry patches and it'll just accentuate them even more um, but I do love the little bit of tan just on the face just to kind of like blend it through but um, it just depends, it depends on, your skin, on type. your skin type it definitely does depend but um, mm. uh, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm all for it you know I, yeah. I generally don't put it on my face because um, mm. I find my skin it's not sensitive but I find that I can be liable to be congested and it can break out you know so yeah. um, normally it's usually a good few days afterwards like a good four to five days after that I'll have the breakout but you don't want to run the risk of something like a clogged pore and then you having this big massive boil kind of on your face or whatever so yeah. just depends on your skin type and if you've had it on your face before mm. and you had no issues have a tan trial do you know Absolutely. and I think a good therapist will advise will you when you're going yeah. for your you know they'll know by looking at your skin type whether your skin can take it or not yeah uh, how, you'd hope <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah Michelle Bruin, uh, have either of you ever had any grooms looking for skincare tips in advance of the big day? Well, I do a lot of grooms. I do a, well. I do a lot of really? male facials. Anyways, I, I have a big male clientele. Um, probably because I don't know. Maybe that the, they find it easier to come to my salon. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's a little bit more private. But I would have um, a lot of grooms come for mm. you know for facials because men have exactly the same problems with their skin as women do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it is very very important. Mm. I think there's you know, nothing to be ashamed of. I think it's actually quite. Not. It's it's you're quite. Right. <laughs> I hope you're listening, lads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 all the grooms out there. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very important that they yeah. would have just to freshen up their skin yeah. because you really put the glow back into their skin. Yeah. Get rid of all the dead skin cells. I think men and are I mean, becoming more skin conscious mm. and more well, appearance conscious. You can't well, have this yeah. beautiful bride beside you and you all don't and then and you look all yeah. haggard and wrinkly yeah, and no, really shriveled yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks thanks yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, well no like because when I, when I got married it was more about getting kind of a hot shave and all that kind of stuff and mm. all. Yeah. I do like the idea of, of the facial and we'll say I, like you said yeah. guys are getting more into their kind of skincare mm-hmm. as well and, and it, it's like that we'll say you have a bright you know, yeah. uh, and and she's done up to the nines and the groom absolutely you know he's literally yeah, yeah. a lot of grooms have manicures as well well, actually, I yeah. think that's very important. Yeah, I think that's a, a lot idea. of you know? a lot of grooms have manicures. Makes give us the well. thumbs up I would as well. Do a lot of yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The last thing is dirty fingernails. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they do. Keep my yeah. hands off the table. No yeah. French yeah, polishes, nothing, mind you, but uh, yeah. <laughs> there's nothing as nice as a nice facial, though, whether it's for a male or a female. Yeah. It's amazing the difference it makes to your it skin. It just brightens really the overall skin complexion because a lot of Irish men, I think, unless you're you're prone to fake, you're not fake tan, prone to being coloured you know, they can be quite transparent almost, you know, they can have quite a Casper kind of a look to their skin, you know, and if the bride has had her fake that's, tan that's, and everything that's done, you know. on the day, you know. Yeah, they're kind of, you know. Yeah, they're, some they're, they're still will, in shock yeah, at marriage. Some men will want a little bit of makeup as well. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are some men who, who do, like they're conscious of their dark circles or, yeah. Yeah. you know, they might have a Blemishes, blemish on their skin yeah. that you might the have to touch up. So it is. All that as well. Like, yeah. All that as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, men are just oh, as vain as women. Well, that's true. I, I think, I think yeah. but it is important. I think, like, from their own perspective as well, that, that they shouldn't be afraid to ask, you know? No. Yeah. You know? Um, one of my own uh, brides, hi, Mary, Mary McNulty, um, great and full ladies. Uh, I'm doing Mary's wedding next year. Uh, would you suggest getting mink lashes before the wedding or just individual ones applied on the morning? I think it's all personal preference. They're both lovely. They're yeah. both lovely. The what thing are about mink the lashes mink for lashes, the guys out there that they are like, about. like they're really, really fine lash, and they're as fine as your own natural lash. So they're placed directly on top of the lashes. So you could have maybe a hundred 
little fine lashes in. Yeah. The only good thing about them, you'll have them for your honeymoon as well. Mm. Oh, they, so are, they are and quite long. And, okay. and they can be personalised. So you can have them really long, you can have them short, you can have a curl, you can have length in, in, in the... Mm. The thickness. The, yeah, yeah, it just depends. But it, it's quite personal. The individual are lovely. They're very, very comfortable to wear yeah. Yeah. on and the they morning can be of your wedding. Kind of Absolutely. Straight away, you know? it, it's one of the things we we'll say, it's one of my pet peeves, we we'll say, when it comes to photographs, that if, if brides have fake eyelashes... That, that are too heavy. It, they're too heavy. They close yeah. down and their eyes. they eye. look like their eyes are closed for a lot yeah. of photographs. Yeah. So, like, and I, I'd normally be telling them, if I, if I notice that in the photographs area, I'm telling them to look at the, their, their husband's eyebrows or looking oh, above yeah, their okay, eyes just so yeah. we can see their eyes. But that's um, where a good makeup artist comes yeah, in. Exactly. But they will advise them. That's far too heavy. Yeah. Do you know, it actually makes them tired looking because they're too heavy on their lid. Yeah. And, and it can it close down effect. the eye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it just it makes, makes the I eye I had the tired, mink lashes like on my wedding day. I had a you half look set. You tired. You look gorgeous. No, I had a half set. I normally would go for a full set on normal occasions, but on that particular mm -hmm. day... I went for a half set. So I actually, when you go into your mink lashes, they actually sometimes will do a bridal style. Mm. So if you say to them that you are a bride to be, you know, then they normally will mm. alter it. Any good eyelash um, therapist anyway um, will, will know kind of like what to do in, in that regard. Mm. And if you do get a natural style, at least if you want any volume, your makeup artist can apply a few individuals on the morning mm -hmm. if you need a little bit extra volume, but you can't take them away, you know, yeah. so you as well have to go mm -hmm. less and add more mm -hmm. rather than kind of, you have two much and then you're trying to pull them out you know because yeah. with the mink lashes they last anywhere from two to four to six weeks you mm -hmm. know so you do just have to be conscious that um you know once yeah. once they're on they're on you know and you mm -hmm. have to get them professionally yeah. removed you know but if so. mary wants some um recommendations for people i don't know if she's from the sligo area or the surrounding area and um, she can message us and i can pass yeah. on some information yeah, to people that yeah. are very we're, good we're, we're going to keep going quickly because we have a lot of questions to go through and uh mm -hmm. We're, we're running out of time as well right. so um, I suppose the next one uh, I have Karen asking uh, hi guys I love a red lip or a strong color lip is it safer to stick with nudes or can I get away with some color mm. Sharon, you can answer that. Depends um, on the time of year. First, really. thing, first thing I would say is, okay, so are, are you used to wearing red lipstick? So, you know, would red lipstick be in your look all of the time? If you are used to wearing red lipstick, then you're going to be used to, you know, the consistency, the texture. I would normally say if you're going red lip, go for a matte red lip rather than a creamy red lip mm -hmm. because like that, you don't want your husband destroyed in red lipstick yeah. for the day mm -hmm. either, whereas the matte is less likely to transfer onto your husband. You have to think about, you want to be kissing your husband the day of your wedding as well. You know, you don't want to be like, you know, don't touch me yeah. kind of. Yeah, thing exactly. um but i love a red lip look i think a red lip is so classic so beautiful um but a nude is obviously safer you know in terms of keeping to maintain as well easier to, easier maintain, to maintain but i would always say to the person if they're going for red lips are you used to wearing red lipstick do you wear it all the time if they say yes then i'm like fine you're used to the top and up you're used to all of that and mm -hmm. i normally will give my two pence or my recommendations on what matte red lipsticks um that i would that i would recommend so i think yeah if you if you like a red lip i think it's a very beautiful yeah, I don't know do you agree as a photographer I, I do love I love colour in the lips yeah. and that's just yeah. personal preference for photographs mm. but I do like the, the nude lips uh, yeah, as well the, yeah. it, it depends on it actually depends on their makeup it yeah. depends on the well the, yeah the, the either the eyes or lips well. you do yeah. either or so yeah. if you know just yeah. depends and yeah. if they want to change them in Photoshop anyway so they can have whatever colour they want yeah. <laughs> that's true um, Sharon, when you have uh, fantastic um, photographers like yourself oh. you can have whatever <laughs> Thanks, yeah. I've, worked, I've worked with Charlene and Anne so thank you very much and look it, it makes my job a lot easier if the makeup is looking yeah. fabulous and yeah. it makes my job ten times yeah. easier you know yeah, absolutely. Um, so Sharon was asking uh, Sharon Gallagher what shades colours would you recommend for brown eyes best recommend for brown eyes Brown eyes, you can practically wear any colour. Yeah. Any colour. I personally like the earthy tones. I like the browns, the golds, um, cranberries, all those nice colours. Mm. Greens are lovely. Yeah. Um, plums are quite good on, on brown eyes. Mm. Um, heather, like that heathery shade. Kind of, yeah. Or taupe is very good. It's yeah. kind of between a brown and a, and a purple is very good as well for brown eyes. Um, I find people that have brown oranges. eyes for sure um, they nearly don't have to go as heavy with their eye makeup they can get away with anything. they can get away with the most minimalistic eye makeup because they have the depth in their eyes already mm -hmm. but uh, I totally agree I love cranberries yeah. on, on brown burnt eyes burnt orange is lovely yeah, burnt as well burnt oranges are lovely really as lovely. well but it depends on their skin tone as well mm -hmm. you know um, and how fair they can mm -hmm. be um, but I 
I, I'm all about kind of really making the eyes pop when, when it's the makeup. I don't follow trends or stick with anyone. Like you could have, I have like nearly three palettes of browns, you know, Absolutely. and every I'm brown. I love will, the earthy tones. Yes, They're yeah, gorgeous. yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the taupey kind of colors are very natural, very paired back. If you want something a little bit warmer, a little bit stronger, you like introduce mm -hmm. a little bit of orange, kind of corally peaches kind of into it as well, mm -hmm. you know, and it can just lift and add color because when you've brown, you know, some people kind of say, oh, well, is the brown not going to mold in? But if you add in a few little transition colors mm -hmm. like your corals and your oranges and things like that, it can just Makes a lift, difference. It can lift the eyes. So Very good, very good. Um, I'm trying to see, we'll say what else. Uh, <laughs> we have a question from Mick. What is the girl's opinion on perfume? The girl's opinion on, on perfume. perfume? On what perfume, we'll say, on the day? Oh, oh so this is a man oh, asking, is it? Man he's asking. obviously he's three. He it's Mick. He's Oh, oh, it's you. He's asking. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. It goes well. through the phases. <laughs> yeah. Once upon a time, Vera Wang, there a couple of years ago, maybe seven or eight years ago, Vera Wang was just everybody, every mm. house she went into, mm -hmm. every bride was wearing it. Now Joe Malone seems to be. It just Popular depends. Well, yeah. Yeah, mine Coco Chanel, Madame was that. Oh, I love Coco Chanel. And it's yeah. my it's my staple. Mm. Um, we we find now Tom Ford is a Tom huge is one. It's fabulous. Actually, yeah. Um. We're we're delighted to have it in in store because it's it's quite hard to get. Like yeah. so, very hard we find it we find it very popular now for Isn't it for the black fragrance. Orchid or yeah, oh, black, black orchid, orchid is just a very popular gorgeous. One. That's the Huge thing about Lannan's Late yeah. Night Farm. They're very up to speed, aren't they? Absolutely, like we they have, have Estee everything. Lauder yeah. stuff that we can't get here in Sligo. Yeah. Um, you can get the likes of Estee Lauder yeah, like as well. Note really, Cosmetics really now, for instance, as well, is yeah. another really one that's exclusive mm. to us as well. You know, but going back to the perfume, um, definitely the Tom Ford will be. Tom Ford, yeah, yeah it Tom is. Ford, it's yeah. it's big, yeah. but yeah, the, yeah, the likes of that. I'm trying to think yeah. what was it's the other one. It's quite trendy. It is. Um, perfumes kind of they go mm -hmm. through a phase, don't yeah. they? Yeah, like, yeah. Joe Malone. Mm -hmm. I think is people huge nearly for, need to be seen day. with yeah. like the yeah. in style perfumes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of like yeah. yeah, it's like people even with their lipsticks as well. We all get a little bit snobby kind of when it yeah. comes to like <laughs> yeah. our products on the wedding day. We want, we don't want the. Even though I had, I wore a Rimmel um, lipstick on my mm. wedding day because yeah. it was my preference, and I remember everyone was so shocked. Everyone was like. Oh, I thought you would have went for like Mac and or something. They're actually nicer though, aren't yeah, yeah. they? Sometimes, like, well, it was my know. preference. Yeah. I just I wore it on yeah. my hen party, and I loved the way it photographed, and mm -hmm. I just yeah. thought that's for me. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, like, but I I remember like it was like you would literally be like, don't photograph that. Like, do you know what yeah, I mean? It's like you it. wanted your high end bits kind of mm -hmm. in your pictures yeah, and stuff, yeah, but. Okay. Yeah, so no, I haven't smelled actually Vera nice Wang before. Have I actually not. Don't oh, have that any. was huge. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of years ago. I've never ago. smelled the Tom Every Ford bride. actually either. So yeah. I Tom Ford's lovely. It's a little bit. I know my strong. husband is watching. So it, is, like, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Do you want to play yeah. a request <laughs> there? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. I'd like to put a request out for me. Oh, don't mind. Lannan's Pharmacy stock, the Black Orchid Tom Ford. Thank you very much. The poor fella. Very good, very good. Well, I tell you, we we have uh, we've tons and tons of questions. We're probably not going to get to them now. We're running really out of time. Make us we can come back. Quick, quick fire round. Yeah. We can come back again. We'll yeah, yeah. We can I come think back we'll have to do another show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we'll have to do another show. Um, we're going to basically just mention the winner of the black canvas cosmetic palette. Cosmetics palette Ooh. is Lisa Nocton. Yeah. Um, so Lisa, if you can pop in some data, collect your prize or message us, and we'll arrange something. And then our winner of the goddess collection is Shona Byrne. Well um, so well done Shona Yay. Uh, and again ask her uh, we're just going to basically ask if you can call in or private message us and we'll arrange something for you to get it out to you I actually um, must say these goddess collections are beautiful to put on your skin the morning of your wedding as well mm -hmm. put a little pop just on the shoulder a little pop just on the collarbones you know don't lather it all over you don't want to look like the tin just man bone, but yeah. a little and like the fact that you've got the three tones you have to choose whichever tone actually suits your skin tone as well I find for me personally I can wear the golden goddess when I have a little bit of fake tan on because it is more golden um, I find with the ice goddess I can wear that when I have no fake tan or if I'm more pale the rose gold if you are definitely more medium deep tan but they're lovely just to put on to the skin do you know so they're mm, a lovely they're product really nice. just to invest in they're um, lovely for, for the, the legs as well for the legs yeah, yeah if you're wearing a shorter think. dress actually or if you're going to change kind really of in lovely. the evening or even yeah. for your evening after do you know just to pop it on the body and just give it a bit of glow so very good very good, very good. well that's it for another episode oh. um, we're basically going to uh, what i want to do for us actually is i want to kind of ask you guys literally how can people get in touch with you um well you can get in touch with me on facebook and young beauty salon or on my Instagram, it's Anne Young Makeup and Beauty. You can email me on anneyoungbeauty at yahoo.com or you can Snapchat me on AYBS Makeup. There Thank you. Go. you.
Um, for me, um, you can, there's a, a contact inquiry form on my website, which is charleneflanaganmakeup.com, and you find even all my contact details there, mm. or um, through Facebook, um, Charlene Flanagan Makeup, and yeah, you can just... Instagram and Snapchat. Yeah, you can find me on all the social media. Um, my Snapchat, I do actually offer quite a lot of bridal tips, um, just being a recent bride-to-be, I offer a lot of tips on suggestions for bridal lipsticks and stuff, so my Snapchat is Charlene F Makeup, so there's no long flanagan there so it's charlene f makeup on snapchat and i'm charlene flanagan on every other social media very platform good, very good. so and adele you have to tell us more about lannan's pharmacy yes. um they they proudly uh sponsored our our, our prizes tonight so they thank did you for indeed that. they did indeed but, you're very uh, welcome for people who don't know who lannan's pharmacy are where we're located in um canning spa in pierce road in sligo mm-hmm. and we stock lots of different things as Anne said we're quite unique with our products okay. you know we have yeah. a lot of the yeah. the real good products that i suppose places just haven't got yet yeah but um pop into us anytime we're actually open eight to eight very good um very good. and sundays 10 to 6 so they're, they're quite good opening hours as well but we can also be found on facebook lannan late night pharmacy snapchat lannan Late Night Pharmacy and Instagram the same again, same again Lannan, Lannan Late, Late Night, Night Pharmacy, Pharmacy. and good. also guys just one quick thing keep an eye on our Facebook page tomorrow we have a big announcement so Ooh. I had to get that one in there, there tonight okay, so so make sure Facebook I'll be back tomorrow. probably on social media again <laughs> <Very good. laughs> thank you very much and thank you for all the tips all you're very well. welcome thank Fantastic. You. Well, well that's it for another episode thank you to our guests Anne Young uh, Adele Kearns and Charlene Flanagan thank you very much ladies thank you for having us thank you for having us so basically that's that's it for tonight guys uh, thanks again for watching if you've missed earlier shows they're all online on your our YouTube channel just search for My Wedding Store um, and make sure to subscribe and you'll be notified each time a new episode comes up um, or if there's any other wedding related clips uh, that are available we hope you enjoyed the show and found it beneficial again feedback welcome just be gentle uh, okay. until same time next week Wednesdays 8pm Good night from all there thank you for our uh, background production crew Michael and Brian <laughs> Hey, well done, guys. You did a good show. Um, that's it for me, Richard McCarthy. I forgot to mention my name of the whole lot. I'm a wedding photographer, but I'll say it at the end. So, thank you very much, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Well done.